Hi, this is Kat with Beta Halik, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to make the Sway With Me earrings. So to make this pair of earrings, what you're going to need is you're going to need some long head pins. And today I have some three inch 21 gauge head pins and I'm using the ball head pins here. I also have some beatable frames that I'm going to be using as a geometric element. I have my choice of earring hook here. And then I also have some eight millimeter gemstone beads. Now you can use eight millimeter pearls. You can also use larger beads for this or smaller beads. So you can really adapt this design to suit your style. Okay, so for tools, we're going to need a pair of nylon drop pliers, a pair of flush cutters, a pair of round nose pliers, and a pair of chain nose pliers. So if you have everything ready to go, let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing I want to teach you here in this tutorial is how to straighten head pins. So you can see over here, I have a couple of head pins that have seen a little, they're a little worse for wear. So what I want to show you is how to straighten those out because for this, we're going to want really, really, really straight and strong head pins. So go ahead and pick up your head pin here if it's uh, got a little wobble to it. You're going to take your chain nose pliers and place them as close as you can to the very tip of the head pin. Now I'm using a ball head pin, but this will work if you have a regular head pin as well. Now take your nylon jaw pliers, bring them over to and just right on top of your chain nose pliers there. So you're almost creating a little, little vise there. So now what we're going to do is we're going to pull them apart and I'm just going to run my nylon jaw pliers slowly up. Yep, and there we go. So you kind of, it works over some of the kinks and you're gonna do this a couple of times just to really get that as straight as you possibly can. And you can see that it's already straightening out a little bit. You can also come at it from different angles. You'll see it start to kind of just naturally bend to one way or another and that will just straighten it out. Now you're doing two things with this. You're not only straightening your head pin, look at how beautiful that looks now. You are work hardening it because we want some really nice stiff head pins here. So this is a 21 gauge and this will work with other gauges as well. Uh, I'm working with the 21 today because I'm doing a simple wire loop and you're gonna see that here in a minute, but I wanted to make sure that this was going to be nice and strong. All right, and you gotta use those nylon jaw pliers to make sure that you're not stripping any of that metal. So you can see sort of an example of what we started with there and what we ended with. So I'm happy with that. I'm gonna kind of set my other guy aside. I think I have enough head pins here to work with. Okay, so let's go ahead and actually construct this uh, pair of earrings. So I'm gonna do both at the same time and you're gonna see why here in a second. All right, so go ahead and take your bead and string it onto your head pin. Now, the idea with this is that we want to create a tiered effect. So what's going to happen is we're going to decide what length we want our longest ones to be. Now, I want, I want a nice pair of long earrings. I think that'll look really, really lovely. So I'm going to come in and I'm going to basically choose the, choose the height for yourself. You can use a ruler if you want, but I'm going to show you how to match everything up here. So I, li I like that. I think that's going to be a nice, nice long length there. So I'm going to come in. I'm going to choose where on my round nose pliers to be. I'm going to just bend my wire backwards so I have a little bit of a, a, a little L there. And I'm gonna wrap that wire up and over the top, move my pliers, just kind of rotate them, and bring that wire across, creating that nice little simple wire loop there. You see? All right, so now we can remove our pliers and come in and just trim off that wire. And now we have one of our components ready to go. Now I'm going to adjust my loop there. It kind of got away from me for a second. So I'm just going to take my pliers there and just really create that little loop that I want it to be. There we go. And this is another little tip. You can come in and sort of flatten your little loop there. Okay, so that's going to be my longest piece that I want onto my earring. Now, in order to do the second one and to have them be even, we're gonna match it to that one. So we're gonna go kind of one for one on each side here. So I'll show you how, or the easiest way to do this really. All right, so go ahead and get your bead on and then kind of just eyeball it, but we're not gonna do anything yet. And what I wanna do is just kind of come in here and line them up. There we go. That is about right. I'm gonna move mine up just a smidge. Because what I'm lining up here, if you can see visually, is you see the tip that's kind of touching that end there because this is where we're going to bend it backwards. So I want to make sure that I'm a little higher there. 
There we go. Okay, that actually looks pretty good. All right, so now I'm just going to put that other side down. I'm going to bend this up and over. I'm going to move my pliers a little further in. I want to make a little bit of a bigger loop there. Bring that across and come in there. Set my scrap aside. There we go. And again, I'm just going to kind of I was a lot happier with that loop. That looks that makes that makes me a little happier. All right. So now I can come in and I can see that I did pretty good. Maybe a little bit, little bit off, just a, just a hair, but I think it's going to be okay. All right. So now I have one and one. So now we need to decide where our second tier is going to be. So you take the same thing. And this is where it's like, it's more um, guesswork in determining where you want that to be. Now, I could make my tier really, really close. I could make it a little further. I can, you know, and just to know where you're going to end. So if it helps you, you can create that third one sooner and then find the middle ground. I'm just going to sort of build mine up. So I don't want mine to, I want mine to kind of all sit a little bit close together here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of lay mine down and then I'm going to find where I want to grab it. I think there's good. All right. So here we go. This isn't an exact science. If you want, I can uh, give you guys the exact measurements of what mine is, but this is where it's kind of fun to, you know, make it really your own truly. Um, but you can match it up as you go. So that's sort of one thing to, to think about. All right. So there we go. There's one. And I'm going to move on to the second side here. So now I'm going to try to match it up to this guy. So we're going to kind of, we're going to play the same game. So I'm just going to pull them together there and match them up as close as I can. There we go. All right. Up and over and rotate. And you're going to have plenty of uh, head pins to work with. So if you find that, oh, shoot, this didn't actually end up being as close as I had wanted it to, because you are kind of eyeballing it. Uh, but nope, that actually looks pretty good. Okay, so now we have our second tiers on each side there, just like so. And now the third part. Now this is what I think is probably one of the trickier parts because you've created a spatial gap between these two. So you wouldn't want to like put your third one up here. You want to find a way to continue the same space that you've created to create that uh, tier, that third tier that makes, makes it look like it belongs basically. Okay. So I'm going to set this down and kind of, again, you're going to want to eyeball it and get those as close as you can. And I think, I think that should do it for mine. Okay. All right, so let's see if I let's see if I did this correctly. <laughs> All right, up and over, bring it across, flush cutters. Okay, and now I'll set that down. And I'm actually pretty happy with that. I think I, I think that's pretty good. I think I did pretty good there. All right, so now let's do one more here, and we're gonna match it up slide that on. Now, if you have a head pin that is particularly wonky that you couldn't straighten out, let's say on one side, you this is a perfect opportunity because we're going to be using less and less of the wire as you go up. So make sure that you're using your absolutely straightest ones for those long tiers there. Okay. Now let's bring this guy over here. Let's see if I can match this up nicely. Okay. And then I do want to make sure that it's going to fit over here as well, just to make sure that I'm being as accurate as possible. All right. I think I did pretty good there. All right. Now I'm just moving it in so I can get a little bit of a bigger loop. You can do tinier loops if you want, if you're using a different bead link uh, over here, but you just want to make sure that that loop is large enough to accommodate that. So don't, to so make sure it's not too small. Okay. We are ready now. Oops, I'm sorry, I bumped my camera. I apologize about that. All right, we are ready now to assemble our earring together. 
Okay, so you've obviously made little loops, but what I want to tell you is to make sure that when you put this all together that your loops are facing, they're all going to be sort of facing the back. So here's what I mean. So here's my bead link. Let's take one of our little guys here, and I'm just going to open this loop just by bending it back ever so slightly, only large enough to slip on my little bead link. So you can see that I'm going a certain direction there with my loop. And now I'm just gonna close that up. And again, you can kind of come in and just give it a little pinch, make sure it's nice and closed. So now I wanna keep on that train and I'm gonna open up this loop here. And I want it to be facing the same direction. So I'm gonna be adding it on the same side so that when you look at it from the front, all of those little seams of these loops are in the back of the earring so you won't see them. So it gives it a nice sort of polished look. Okay, so there's one and two. And now we're coming in with number three. And same thing, making sure we are facing the back. Closing that up, and this guy needs a little pinch there just to make sure we are good. Okay, so we have our little pendant here. Now, the last thing that we need to do is add on our earring hook. Now, this particular earring hook will have that uh, loop sort of facing the front, so keep that in mind as well, because here's where you can really decide the front and the back. All right, so we're just gonna slide that in and close it up. Okay, now when we move on to our second earring, you have to make a choice here. Do you want to put your uh, tears opposite so you get a nice fall effect? And then you, what you, the, the other decision you can make is whether you want to wear them uh, and how you want to do that. So, all right, I'm going to do this big guy first here. So, here we go. Open it up. Slide that on. And close it up. There we go. Okay, so for my purposes, this guy is now going to be on the outside. So I'm going to now take and do the second one here, sort of next to it. Close it up. Give that a little pinch there. All right, and now I wanna make sure that he falls on this side, right? Because last but not least, for our tears, I'm gonna open this guy up and make sure that I slide him onto this side. All right, so there we go on that one. And finally, let's add on our earring hook. And now you can decide how you want to wear them. You can wear them. I personally like the longer one towards my face, so I would wear them like this but it is entirely up to you. But that's it, it's just some simple wire loops, some really, really straight head pins, and your favorite beads. Now you could also change these out for any other beads of your choice. You can also make them multicolored. I think that could be really fun doing some mixed gemstones as well. All right, I hope you enjoyed this video. You can get all of these supplies and everything you've seen here over at beadaholic.com.